This Shia um, is the first in a series of Shiurim on Yemois HaMoshiach, uh, Ikva Sada Mashiach, the days before the coming of Mashiach. And by way of introduction, it provides a big picture. Very often a person carries on his day uh, in a small framework and doesn't see outside his own lifestyle. He sees the micro aspect of life, but not the macro, the big picture, what's going on outside in the whole process of evolution, if we can use that word, from Golas into Geula. The big picture. A friend of mine who learns in the Koilel of the Mir Yeshiva told me that he once went to ask a question for advice from the Rosh Hashiva of Ponovich, Rav Shach, many years ago. And Rav Shach asked him, where do you learn? Where do you study? Which koilel are you in? And he answered and he said, I learn in the Mir Yeshiva, in Mer Shoim, in Yerushalayim. And Rav Shach immediately responded quite differently and perhaps uh, unexpectedly. We wouldn't have expected such a reaction. He said, oh, those beautiful large windows which look out onto Har Habayis, the place where the Bisamikdosh is, and you can see and imagine the rebuilding of the Beis HaMikdosh. Well, most people, I think, who sit in the mirror uh, look out the windows, but who thinks of looking out and expecting to view and to see the, the Beis HaMikdosh when it will be built in its time? The reason why Rav Shach's response is, is quite unique is that he gives a larger picture. He's telling uh, my friend that look wider, look, as they say, with a rachvus, uh, a with a width, look ahead, look and see when you look out to the window there that there's a future which we anticipate will be bimheo v'yomeinu omein. Let me explain perhaps with some background of what this big picture includes. If you look at the dates on the Luach in the calendar, you'll see that on Tes Vov Nissan, on the night of the 15th of Nissan, which is Leila Seda, was the night when, the day, when Avram Avinu was told by the Bris Ben Habsorim at the covenant before he had any children, that eventually the Jewish people would go down to Mitzrayim and then when they would leave, Don Anoichi, and they would become about the Geula, the Yetzias Mitzrayim. On the same day, years later, uh, the Malachim came and appeared to Avram and told him that he would have a child. Remember when he was sitting there on the third day after Bris Mila? Same day, years later, Yitzchok was born on that day, the day late, a year later. And then we find also that on Tesvav Nissan was also the day in which Yitzchok gave the brocha, the blessings. Instead of giving them to Esau, he gave them to Yaakov. And that was the day also of the Geula from Mitzrayim. Yitzchak Mitzrayim took place on that day. With a long lens, with a glance at the big picture, one sees that there were plans set into motion from the time of the Brisbane Absorim to Yesiyat Mitzrayim, but of course we can't stop there. As we know, the four glasses of wine which are drunk on Leda Seda, the Hitz Tzais, the Hitz Tzaisi, the Hitz Alti, the Goalti, the Lokarti, the Hevesi Eschem Lila'on. The whole future of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was not just the, the redemption from Mitzrayim, but going into the Midbar, receiving the Torah, going into Eretz Yisrael, and eventually the Beis HaMikdash, and we can go on and on. And that's why Leil HaSeda is called a Leil Shimurim, a night of guarding, of protection, of great Geula for Klal Yisrael. There's a big picture. It's interesting that we begin Leil HaSeda with Avodim Hoyinu Lefaroi B'Mitzrayim. We talk about Vayetzien HaShem Alokeinu Miyod B'Yod Chazok V'Zroa Natuya, the the Haggadah of the Leila Seder, but it's interesting how it ends. Leila Seder ends with the following song, which people sing, but perhaps they're unaware of what's behind it. Chad Gadio, Chad Gadio, the two goats, the Zabin Abba, Bitrei Zuzei, that father bought for two Zuzim, 
Chadgadya, the Vilna Gaon explains that the two goats refer to the two goats that Yaakov brought in, and he had bought the birthright from Esau, the Bechera, and therefore he was entitled to the Borchas instead of Esau, and he received by bringing the Korban Pesach and the Korban Chagiga, the Zabin Abba that our father, meaning Yaakov Vino, had bought from Esau, Betrei Zuzei, and for that, says the Vilna Gaon, every possible potential brocha that the Jewish people have ever had in their past, in their future, that ever will happen to the Jewish nation, all originated from the Trei Zuzei, the Zabin Abba, that the brochas did not go to Esau, but they went to Yaakov. And that's the source of all brocha which later Yaakov gave, in particular, says the Vilna Gaon, to Yosef. He was given the main brocha, and then it went on and following. The Osa Shunra, the Ochlo Legadia. The cat refers to the jealousy of the brothers, which led that the brochas dissipated and Jewish people went down to Mitzrayim, to Egypt, as slaves. The Osa Kalba, which refers to Egypt, the Kelev of Mitzrayim, which is the pride, the, the Kelev, the Avoid Zora, the idol worship of Egypt, the Ochla Lashunra, which ate up the jealousy, and the Bochas therefore disappeared at that time. The Osa Chutra, which refers to the matter, the staff of Moshe Rabbeinu, which hit the dog, meaning which he used to bring about the Makas in Mitzrayim, and the brochas came back, and says the Vilna Gaon, the brochas from the matter of Moshe lasted until the time of the destruction of the first Beis Hamikdash. So the brochas returned. The Osa Nura, which is the fire of Avodah Zorah, which destroyed the first Beis Hamikdash, and the brochas were removed from Klal Yisrael through the Avodah Zorah and the destruction of the first Beis Hamikdash, until you find the Osa Maya the cover Lenura. The water refers to the Torah of the Ansheik Nesses Hagdoila and Talmud Bavli, and the Koyach and the merit of Torah brought back the Brochas back to Eretz soil until the Osa Shunra, the Shosa Lamaya. And the cow refers to the Golas of Edoim, which is the second Beis Amikdash, Esau, and drank up the water, and therefore the Brochas disappeared again. The Osa Shaychet, the Shochat Lesura, that refers to the Mashiach ben Yosef. The Osa Malach Amoves, the Shochat Lesheichet means that the uh, by the moors of Gog and Magog, that the Bochas will disappear. The Osa Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the Shochat Lemalach Amoves, the Zabin Abba Betrei Zuzei. Talk about a big picture. There you have the history of Klal Yisrael, where the Bochas weave in and thread out of the different generations of Klal Yisrael. And you see that the perspective is much more than just going out of Mitzrayim. The Bochas came in and then left, and as we saw from the time of the Brisbane Habsorim all the way until Yitzhak Mitzrayim, it was the same night. And therefore, it's incumbent on us to, when we come into these days of Moshiach, to try and look and glance and perhaps enter into our mindset the idea of a big picture that is now taking place in our nation of the Bochas returning back, the end of the period as we see of Golas Edaim and the time of Moshiach and Bimheir of Yomenu we would see the building of the Beis Hamikdash. In order to almost consolidate this idea and bring it perhaps more to reality, I would like to share with you a passage in the Zoyha in Parshas Pinchas. It's paid Reish Kof Aleph in the Zoyha in Parshas Pinchas. And the, sto- the following story is, is recalled. Rav Abba, who was an Amorah, was talking to Rabbi Yossi, and he explained to him an incident that occurred with the Boitzina Rabbi, it means the great light, Reb Shimon Bar Yochai. And Reb Shimon Bar Yochai heard this 
from Rabbi Eliezer Hagodl, the great Rosh Hashiva, the Tana, Rabbi Eliezer. The following event happened one day. A Chochem Godol, a great, intelligent, wise man from the non-Jewish world, came and visited Rabbi Eliezer. It's not said who it was. And he said, Sabo, Sabo, uh, old man, old man, Shalosh Shalosh, I have three questions to ask you. Answer me. What's the, what's the answer to these three questions? The first is that you claim that there are supposed to be three temples, three Beis Hamikdash. But tell me, where on earth does it say anywhere in the scriptures, in the writings, that there will be a third? And he knew his psukim, he knew his references, and he said a posuk from Chagai, Perik Beis, Posuk Tes, God only here had covered the Beis Hachroin min ha Rishain, the reverence and the eminence of the later house by Shani will be greater than the first but nowhere does it say a third so where do you see and where's your proof that there will be a third one there'll be an Achroin and a Rishain and no more secondly he said you the Jewish people call yourselves the Atem Hadveikim Bashem Elokeichem you are close you claim that you are born in Lashem Elokeichem, you are the children of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If that is the case, and you're so close, then why is it that you have so much suffering, and so much persecution, and so much anti-Semitism, and so much stress, and so many difficulties which you endure? If someone is so close to the king, then surely he's protected, and he has a life of happiness, and ease, and contentment. But we are the ones who have an easier life, far easier than you. We don't have any pogroms. We haven't endured a holocaust. So who is close? We are, and not you, the Jewish nation. Third question, he asked, why is it that the Jewish people are so particular and careful about what they eat? You claim, so this wise man said, that if you eat food which is kosher, which is carefully inspected and uh, prepared in a certain way, then you are healthier and well and strong. But Saba Saba, it's not true. Who is stronger? We are stronger than you are. And we eat everything. We eat shrimps and we eat lobster and we eat pig. We eat everything. And we're very strong. <laughs> we have far more strength and far more endurance than you, the Jewish people. So it can't be that the food that you eat is in any way giving you the strength that you claim. So it's untrue that you're the strongest of nations and the food is, is not helping you. Saba, Saba, and he said to him, and don't give me your tirutzim, don't give me your answers. No, I'm right, no. And he said it with a lot of scorn and a lot of derision. And the Zohar brings down that Rabbi Eleazar lifted up his eyes, stared at the man and he crumbled in front of him into a heap of bones and I suppose they called the janitor and swept up the remains. And Rabbi Eliezer was extremely annoyed and upset at the, at the scorn and the chutzpah of the way the man had spoken. But at the same time, says the Zohar, he then broke down into tears and called out, Hashem Adoineinu, Mo'adir Shimcha B'chol Ha'oretz, How great is your name! Surely everything is inside the Torah. So what is the answer to this in the Torah? When I saw that passage in the Zoha, uh, I'm sure you asked the same question, and Rabbi Eliezer himself couldn't answer. Maybe he could, but he didn't. And it's recorded that he asked Elio Hanovi, what is the answer to these three questions? And Elio Hanovi also didn't answer. He said to Rabbi Eliezer, I will go up to the Masifta de Rakia, up to the Kisei HaKovoid, and ask Hashem myself, and I'll come back and tell you. So the answers that we have, which are recorded in the Zoyha, come straight from the Kisei HaKovoid, straight from Shamayim. And this is what Elio Novi told Rabbi Eliezer, of which Rabbi Abba was recording to Rabbi Yossi. The answer to the first question. 
This is what Elio Anovi told of Eliezer. At the time of the redemption from Mitzrayim, of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the intention was that the Jewish people should be a familiar lamata like the familia lamala. They should be like the malochim, just like in malochim they serve and answer and praise Hashem. So it is that that was the intention of bringing the Jewish people out of Mitzrayim, that they would be literally a mamleches koen in the Goy Kodosh, they would be similar to malochim, but earthly malochim, and not heavenly malochim. And that Hashem would provide them with a Beis HaMikdosh, which he himself had made. That was the intention. Says the Zohar, said Eliranovi to Rabbi Eliezer, but after the chait of the Meraglim, of the spies, and also the Egel, the golden calf, the plan was changed. And Hashem decided that you will build it and not me. And the result was, as Shlomo HaMelech says, and he knew it would be destroyed. Im Hashem lo yivne bayis, shov omlu boinov boy. It's not built by Hashem, and therefore it won't last. Says so the Zohar, the same thing occurred when it came to the second temple. It also wouldn't last, because in the time of Ezra, many Jewish men took non-Jewish wives, and therefore man built the second base of Migdash. And that's the meaning that we say every morning, says the Zohar, in Oz Yoshi, in the Shiva. The intention originally was to be Amoi Vesito Amoi Bahar Nacholoscha, to bring them out and to plant them on the Han in Har Habais, in Har Nacholoscha, Mochoin Lishivtocho Po Alto Hashem, that your residence, which you have made, Po Alto, which you have made Hashem, by Srishain, the first temple, Mikdash Hashem Koinenu Yodecha, and a sanctuary you have made with your hands, Hashem. But it didn't work like that. It wasn't, and therefore both never lasted. The eventual Geula in the big picture that we are looking forward to anticipate, the following will occur, says the Zoyha. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will bring down two Beis HaMikdosh, one above the other. The first is called the Tamira, one which is hidden, which is a Beis HaMikdosh of Bina above the clouds of glory, which we might glance at, but we won't see properly. Underneath that is the Beis HaMikdosh of, called the Beis HaMikdosh of Malchus, which will be built, both of them, by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that is the picture that will take place. And actually Rashi brings it down on the Shira that that the one is underneath the other. There is a Beis HaMikdosh Lamala and a Beis HaMikdosh Milamata. And the one that we will eventually see, Bimheir of Yamenu, like the one above, is built by the Almighty Himself. That's the meaning of the prophecy in Haggai. Godoy Yihiyeh HaAcharoin. The Acharoin means number three and number four over the Rishon, which is number one and number two. Because number three and number four, which is in the Geula Shalema, which Hashem will build, will be greater than the two which man had built by the time of Shlomo HaMelech and Ezra. And that is the answer to the first question. And therefore, three and four will be far greater in eminence, in reverence, in majesty, and it will be literally Hashem, which you have made, that's in Shamayim. Mikdash Hashem will be the bias which we will see, the Beis Amikdash of Tiferes of Malchus, which we will see underneath in our times, in the time of the Geula Shlema. And that is the meaning of the next Beis Amikdash of which the Goy had asked from Rabbi Eleza. The answer to the second question is that why on earth do you have so much difficulty? We are the ones who are close, said the non-Jew, and not you. And Eliyahu brought back to Rabbi Eleza 
a moshul, a parable, directly from the Kisei HaKovoid. And this is the moshul. The nations of the world, all of them, are compared to a vorim on the goof, to limbs on the body, the arm, the muscle, the legs, the feet, the ankle, the hands. All the nations are compared to the shayafin, in the words of the, the Zohar, to the limbs on a body. Klal Yisrael are compared to the heart, the nerve center, the source of survival. The Jewish nation is soft. As an organ, it's not strong. It receives every single knock and the heart, but is the lifeline. And therefore, you might well find that as a limb, the arm or the leg or the muscle or even a finger are stronger as a feature, as an organ than the heart. But the heart is the essence, and that's what the Jewish nation are compared to, the heart. And therefore, it's soft, it's not strong, but it, it is the survival kit. It enables all the other limbs to live. That's the source of life, Torah and mitzvahs, which provides, that's what we say, Vayihi Yom Hashishi, that the whole creation is dependent on the fulfillment of the Torah and the mitzvahs, which the Jewish people keep, and not the non-Jewish people. And that's the difference between the strength and the weakness, the limbs and the heart, the other nations of the world and the Jewish nation. And that, intrinsically, is the answer to why it's so important that we are careful about what we eat. What you feed an arm, what you feed a leg, is unimportant. It doesn't really matter. You can even do without the arm and the leg. But what goes through the heart, the blood, must be pure. Umum einboch. There must be no blemish in the blood, because that's the real source of life. And therefore the Jewish nation, who are intrinsically the heart of the world and the heart of civilization and the heart of creation, has to be so careful in what they eat. It's not just physical nourishment, but spiritual nourishment, which is provided by food which is kosher. When you make a bracha before and you make a bracha afterwards. Because it resembles, it's compared to the heart, and the heart has to be pure. The heart has to have no, no blemish, no defilement at all. But it doesn't really matter about the nourishment which arrives at a big toe or an ear. Or it's true it starts from the heart, but the heart is the source of life and that's where it must be pure. And there you have perhaps the big picture of why the suffering, uh, why the Jews, why the hardship, why the kosher food, and what eventually will happen in the future by the third base of Mikdash and the fourth which will come. There is intrinsically a tremendous lesson in this Zoyha which helps us tremendously to understand the concept of the big picture in the time of the Imois HaMashiach draws to a close and we come closer to the time of the Mashiach. And that is that we as a Jewish nation function principally and primarily on the basis of the heart. Let me explain. In the beginning of Pirkei Avos, Shimon HaTzadik, who was one of the Anshei Knesset HaGdoyla, explained with the Mishnah Al Shloisha Dvarim Ha'olam Oimeid Al HaToyra Al Avoida Ve'al Gemilos Chasodim we know that that Mishnah is different from the later Mishnah in Perik, in Perik Aleph when it says, that, That's different. But this first Mishnah, on three things the world stands, Vabenu Yoyna, in his commentary on Perik Yavis, explains what does it mean, I made, and it's quite a chidush, it's quite a novel pshat, it's not really, but this is what Vabenu Yoyna explains. He says that, what it means by the world stand is what Hashem anticipates from humanity. What he expects to see perfection of in the conduct of the Jewish nation. Their perfection in Torah, in Avoida, and Gemilas Chasodim. And on that the world depends because that's the, that's the, the heartthrob, 
That's the basis of the Jewish nation that they should perform and perfect those three mitzvahs. Now, if you look carefully, each of those three, the central nerve which goes through Torah, Avoida, and Gemenes Chasadim is Avoida Shebalev. Limud HaTorah, studying Torah, is not by any means simply a means or a facility in which to become a great rabbi or to become a great Rosh Hashiva or to author books or to become famous and prestigious. Hashem wants us to learn Torah. And there we are. And to practice Torah and to apply it. And that is the meaning which Reb Chaim Baloshan talks about in Nefesh HaChaim Shah Dalad of Torah Lishma, learning Torah for, for its own purpose. And that is the greatest possible mitzvah, Talmud Torah Keneged Kulam. Of course, it must lead to practice and it, must, it will lead to great rabbonim and great teachers, of course, but that's not the primary entrance into Torah. Hashem wants us to know Torah and to learn Torah and to practice Torah. There is a famous episode in Lakewood Yeshiva in New Jersey that when Rabbi Aaron Katla, the great Rosh Yeshiva, had died, the administration made a parlor meeting for the wealthy men in America in order to boost the Yeshiva after Rabbi Aaron had passed away. And uh, the men were sitting in a room, and as they were about to begin the meeting, the wife of Rabban came in and made the following comment. Gentlemen, you know exactly why you've come here today, but I would just like to make a point that when you take out your checkbooks and you write a check, please don't assume that you can expect a quota of dayanim or a quota of shochtim or a certain quota of teachers or moalim, it doesn't work like that. That's not the way my husband intended that Lakewood Yeshiva should be. Inevitably, and of course, the whole of America and all of the world will be served by the greatness of the Torah that is studied in Lakewood. And there will be great dayanim and teachers, and certainly to serve the community. But that's not the, the reason for writing the check. That's not the reason why my husband, Rebbaon, wanted Lakewood to be a mockum of Torah. It's because Hashem wants Torah, because we must learn Torah and purify ourselves and grow and makadish ourselves with his mitzvahs. That's called Torah Lishma. It's Torah with a lev, a genuine devotion without any searching for pride or prestige or influence. That's not the basis of it. The second, Avoida, which is Ezuhi Avoida Shabalev, Zut Fila. The Avoida refers to prayer. It's not a ritual, it's not a chant, it's not a mantra, but it's words which are said with great devotion and great meaning. Shivchi Kamaim Libech Noichech Penei Hashem. Prayer begins and ends with an emotion, with a heart, with a, a conversation. Somebody went into Rav Chaim Kanievsky recently in Bnei Brak and said to him, I have tremendous problems. When I daven, how do you have kavona? And Rav Chaim looked at him in great amazement and he said to him, why? You're talking to Hashem. <laughs> so simple, so direct in its answer. You're talking to the Almighty. It needs a lave. It needs emotion. It needs great, great sincerity. That is what prayer is all about. Gemilas Chasodim, maybe we can apply in the following way. The Rampam in Moira Novochim explains the difference between Tzedek, Tzedoko, and Chesed. Says the Rambam, Tzedek, righteousness, is something that you have to do. For example, like you, if you have a worker, you must pay him. That's a Tzedek. If you knock someone's car and you cause damage, you must pay for it. That's a tzedek. Something that you should and it's correct, it's righteous to do is a tzedek. Tzedoko is something higher. In the words of the Rambam, it's a choiv on the nefesh, but it's not really that you, are, you feel obliged. You must give money to the poor man. He doesn't have. You're not, but you feel the choiv on the nefesh. It's higher than tzedek. Says the Rambam, chesed is even higher. Chesed is greater than stalker for one simple reason. Chesed kindness implies lehative, 
to be benevolent for that person and that needs lave. In order to care and be devoted and support somebody else, it needs concern, it needs empathy, it needs kindness, which comes from the lave. We are chesed, and that's what we learn from Avraham Avinu, is, is not for his benefit, but for the benefit of the recipient. And that needs lave, that's genuine, that's heart. And therefore, you see, perhaps when Elio Anovi told Rebbe Eliezer that the whole mahus, the whole essence of the Jewish nation, and the reason why they eat their food is because they are the lave, they represent the heart of humanity. That's why al Torah which is where the perfection of humanity comes out, is in those three which all require Torah lishma, avoido shabalev, which is prayer, and chesed is benevolence, which comes from the heart, the kindness. In Shulchan Aruch, in Simon Samach, the Mechaba, the Shulchan Aruch, brings a discussion that Yeshoim rim mitzvahs tzrichas kavano, mitzvahs ein tzrichas kavano. How do we pasken? Whenever you do a mitzvah, do you need kavano or not? In the end, the maskona, the conclusion in the Gemara is mitzvahs tzrichas kavano. Kavano means leiv. Every mitzvah needs an intention. That's leiv. All the tariag mitzvahs require intention, devotion. The Mishtabur there in Simon Samach explains certain circumstances, how we arrive at the devotion, which is not for this discussion, but since mitzvahs tzrichas kavano, it means leiv. It needs that involvement. These, perhaps, are the big picture behind all that's happening at the moment in our nation. It doesn't discuss the issues of Gog and Magog and the Emunah in Yemoy Samoshiach and Amolek and Erev. Those are for later Shiurim in this series. But this first Shia is, I hope, gives a big picture of what does it mean, the Beis HaMikdosh, what does it mean the essence of the Jewish people and our conduct should be by the lave? That's why the first and the second temples were destroyed, because there was a lack of application of the lave, whether it was through Avodah Zorah, Gilai Rosh, Shvichas Domim, or the second temple because of Sinas Chinam. It's all a factor of the central nervous system, which is lave, which is the devotion. Rachmona Liba Boy. HaKadosh Baruch Hu requires the leiv, Echod Amar Bev Echod Amamit, Uvevad Sheyechavin Liba Lashomayim. That is our calling and what is asked of us in these times of Yemois HaMashiach, Igbos HaMashiach, in anticipation that we should literally see number three and number four of the Beis HaMikdosh. It's recorded in the Zoha that after Rabbi Yossi had heard all that Rab Abba had said, he got up and he kissed him and said, Rebbe, it was Kadai to come to Aulam Hazer just to hear these three points. I hope these points of, as they say, Devoim Hayotzim en Halev, Nichnosim en Halev, and they give the required Chizuk of.